Hey there everyone, it's Monica, just Monica, and I am here with a friend. Uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm F Days. I'm, I've been around the Talentless Nana server, and me and Monica just managed to have some discussions over there, and we've decided to maybe try something a little new, talk about the manga in depth with, you know, have a conversation about Nana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this is a, a person I met in the Talentless Nana server, and uh, we, we have some pretty interesting conversations before, and then I'm like, wait a minute, what if we record this conversation? And mm -hmm. and, and now we're here recording a conversation, isn't that Pog? <laughs> it's, um, it, it's great. Um, I didn't think uh, we'd be doing this, you know, the first time we met, but, you know, the more we talked, the more I was like, you know what, this, this would be great. Um, if we did something like this together, so, you know. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. Yeah. Little nervous jitters. Time, yeah, I, I, I we'll get, get over it. it. I'm a little bit nervous too, okay. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is that I did a reread recently. I, I, I read mm -hmm. from where the manga, where the anime left off to the to like the modern story i guess like to like where we're at and there's a couple things that i noticed mm -hmm. first off i want to ask is this like a complete reread from chapter one uh no i said from from right when the anime ended off so like i think it's like chapter okay. 28 or so because yeah yeah 27 28 i think is when yeah it ended and yeah what are, what are your thoughts um okay so i i would i just heard about recently the Jin is kaoya's sister uh theory mm -hmm. and i want you to know that i'm completely on board now like before i was very very skeptical uh skeptical mm -hmm. but i am completely on board now i need to find this uh thing oh um but there's a part a second oh. uh, sorry just one second but just wanted to give a little flash warning to the listeners um we are going to be definitely spoiling the entire manga up to chapter uh 88 oh yeah 100 percent. so yeah just letting anyone anyone who's tuning in listening um uh, big spoilers ahead oh yeah 100 percent. thank you for uh clarifying that i didn't really think about it no worries. But yeah, um, uh, you okay. were saying about the... Yeah, I'm trying to find the chapter where they talk about the, where they give the backstory. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, um, that should be... For the sister. 70s, right? It's... 70s? Yes. I'm finding it now. 76 maybe I'm, I'm checking through the chapters no worries i guess while we're waiting for monica to find the chapter um let us know in the comments if you guys are listening in uh if you have a favorite moment favorite chapter favorite theory about talents nana and or maybe even any ideas where you guys wanted to go just let us know down below it'd be nice to carry on and read what you guys write and uh, maybe tackle it in another episode of this conversation slash podcast slash discussion not quite sure what we we're going to label this but we'll see how it comes out mm -hmm. oh yeah that whole thing okay okay here it is mm -hmm. right here this page this page is what utterly convinced me she's like i began to hate myself and wish that i became someone else and then i woke and then when I awoke, a certain power had awakened me. Gee, I wonder what that power is to become someone else. The power to transform yeah, into other people. It's fascinating because I do think we've also seen Jin um, be associated with transforming into animals like the cat and then the butterfly as well. Because he was a butterfly, I think, one mm -hmm. spy in Soroka. At one yeah, time. so that, I that... butterfly. Yeah. Uh, the little bubbles telling the whole transformation thing. I think it's very obvious what it it's referring to oh yeah like it's also like the fact that it's a butterfly because yeah like you said there was the scene uh where they were a butterfly when they were following 
It is Suroka, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, I assume so. Suroka, Suroka. I, I, that's how I've been pronouncing it to some extent. Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's it's the butterfly that really like clicked it in my head. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is like um, a gin imagery if I ever saw one. Mm -hmm. um, which makes me think, do you think this is like way too on the nose for the author? Like it's a double bluff. Maybe he's like making us com like completely believe in this theory and then switch it up later on no that's the thing about like writing you know there has to be like mm. s like the the fact that i think a large majority of the audience like a lot a large majority of people still like don't believe uh i think is enough to like I, like i said i was rereading this series recently and like there wasn't there's never been like a time where like they hinted at something and then they directly lied and like like they switched it up yeah. a bit like this would be a very like the closest thing is like the way that the twins talents works but like i have my own like thoughts about that which likely which which kind of just go directly against logic but i don't care fair enough um yeah i do completely agree with you because again i think the author since it's monthly the author would probably expect maybe the viewers not to retain too much of all these um, details. And so I think if there is a foreshadowing that he drops, it's most probably going to be uh, what it's foreshadowing rather than it being a double bluff, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Speaking of foreshadowing, that was a really good transition into another one of our talk at topics. One of the conversation topics that we talk about a lot is like the release schedule of Talentless Nana. Like, We've kind of noticed that there's like a lot of disappointment in a lot of the people that like view that read the manga, um, and there's mm -hmm. we hear a lot of the, the complaint like, oh, it doesn't progress enough. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I I think we've talked about I think one of the well, the actual issue is that it's coming out monthly, so it feels like mm -hmm. it's a lot longer of a wait, and so it's like mm -hmm. instead of like a normal progression, like it. I remember this the feeling the most during the Moe arc, where it's like, where it felt like it was dragging its feet. Like, come on, I want to focus on the Nana story. What the fuck is this Moe shit? You know? Absolutely. I, I will admit I'm also um, on that camp where I feel like the s story is going slower than it probably should go. But then again, since I haven't reread it in ages and I've been following it for quite a while, I think um, I've been following it. I mean, I am quite a new fan to the entire Nana manga, so I, I haven't been following it for too long, but I've uh, maybe just a few chapters before the camp arc, so it does feel like I've been following it for quite a while. Mm. And Well, because yeah, this, because um, like, despite that only being like 10 or so chapters, that's like almost a year. It, exactly, it feels like, uh, like a year almost, or even longer, and because of this, like my, I think, perception of the story's pace has been skewed a bit, and so I'm kind of expecting more than I guess what it uh, whenever a new chapter comes out I'm always expecting oh I'm gonna get like so much more new content but then I realize that it is basically just another chapter it's but instead of it coming out weekly it's uh, on a monthly magazine it's it's it, it's an adjustment and um now that I'm I guess accustomed to the weight uh, I am I have tempered my expectations in a sense if that makes sense mm. Like, I I did reread recently, and that was kind of one of the things I was, like, wondering about, like, how bad is the pacing? And I was actually really, really surprised that, like, when you do read it, like, as you would normally read a manga, the pacing's actually, like, really good. It's on point. I didn't notice any pacing issues, so I'm 100% convinced that it is just, like, a monthly waiting thing, which is honestly, like, understandable. Like, um, because, like, a month for, like, a suspense theory, uh, suspense show, right, is like so long, right? Generally, I think like each chapter brings with it like enough content to like keep you satisfied for like a week, maybe a week and a half, two if you're, it's like a really eventful chapter. Mm -hmm. But like because you're forced to wait a month, it's like the other two weeks you've just like forgotten about the entire events of the, the chapter, so it's like. I've, I often find myself feeling like, oh wait, Nana exists. 
when it comes time. It's like legit, yeah. And, and like, I, and I always end up realizing that like at least like a week before the chapter even comes out. So it's like it, it, it definitely is like such a long week for the kind of show that Nana, the kind of manga that Nana is. Absolutely, and it's one of those things where like, um, I think usually with usual other uh, monthly manga um, magazines or like. Uh, mangas that uh, come out monthly, uh, they tend to have a larger like page count. And with Nana, they have uh, I think slightly more than a weekly. I think they sit around like uh, like um, uh, t- like near thirties. I think in their page count. And I think due to that, there's also like a bit of a maybe disappointment from some fans because they expect I think monthly manga page counts like which are like forty plus in general. I mean, uh, I'm looking at this chapter now, chapter 78, that's like 44 pa- pages. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, if we go into like, the page. some of the more modern, but I think it's because like, it just feels like it goes by so fast. I, I definitely yeah. respect um, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it, it's because it's so suspenseful. Man. Like, uh, I mean, chapter 84, that's 33 pages. I th- oh yeah, that's one of the things. Like the page counts are very um, fluctuating, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. We're kind of always not sure exactly. Like, there's nothing really fixed with Nana, which I guess adds to the story in a sense. But yeah, it's it's kind of like a guessing game. Like, oh, this chapter is going to be this amount of pages, or this chapter is going to be this. I amount mean, of pages. I mean, to be fair, like if I was doing a, if I was writing a manga, I would kind of like want it to like. I, I, I guess it's like a good way to put it is that it's like it's ending on suspenseful story beats which i think is what it's like intended mm-hmm. to do so it's like absolutely in some cases like the backstory bit it's like 44 pages because that's how many pages they needed to communicate her backstory as well as like leaving the suspense of oh the next step for execution on a dead or rim so it's like oh shit <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I think I'm just being a bit uh, selfish and... Oh, no, I don't blame you. Um, I don't blame you, because, like, I think that overwhelming resentment of, like, where... where Nana? <laughs> like, where, like, what's yeah, going on with everything exactly. it, it is honestly I, one of the... One of the barriers to this series' is popularity. We were talking about that before. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, just, like, um, the series itself feels very niche due to the fact that, um, again, it being a monthly manga, um, the anime adaptation, that's a whole kind of form. But basically, the whole reception of that and the fact that the manga is coming out monthly definitely has kept the fan base small, which is which has its ups and downs because small fan base are usually more intimate, more friendly with each other. Mm-hmm. But again, um, there's very little to really discuss and it feels the fandom is quite... Um, uh, um steady uh, would be a nice word for it i guess but yeah it's quite uneventful in, in a sense though to be fair um since when i first joined the Thomas Nana community it has like changed a lot a lot of the people that i used to like converse with like near daily are like not active at there at all like raccoon nez Granted, Nez is like still pretty active. I have not seen Freydu like once, <laughs> and yes, um, just a lot of a lot of the people I just don't see anymore. And then there's just like a whole bunch of lot of new people. Which, granted, I think I think I joined the manga community like around like the Twin Trick arc. That was like when it was oh. like I think like a little bit into the Moe arc. Somewhere with a long, that. long back. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. How many, years would, how many years would that be now? Is that two years? I think likely because um, I like as soon as I as soon as the anime ended. Uh, I, I talked about this before, but yeah, as soon as the anime ended, I I just began like a traumatized binge of the manga where I just like read everything oh, and fair enough. post that, and I was like, oh shit. And then, like after that, like it was, it wasn't really all that far after I I, I made my like channel and got my stuff, mm-hmm. and then I just started reacting to like the most recent chapters. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, yeah, and oh, one thing I have to talk about the fandom. You are one of the most important people keeping it alive, basically. Oh. 
<laughs> your channels, uh, you, you're discussing it, you're reacting to it, and that's probably giving uh, people who would have never given this anime or manga, um, you know, like something to, you know, start with and then probably dive into it later. So, you know, thank you. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's, it's become like a commitment for me. And I, and I definitely feel, I definitely feel that commitment because it's like a lot of my inactivity just comes from like general mental health stuff and depression and like stress. And yet like Talent Astana is like, it comes out every month and like it always gets like a decent amount of like, sorry about the noise, I just checked onto my channel. It always gets like enough views where like I feel like it's worth doing and so like I just always do it, you know? And it makes me it makes me really happy to like be able to it also it's like it's one of those things that like it, it keeps me doing it mm -hmm. and even like recently right mm -hmm. yeah like the like it, it it's it honestly is what keeps me like still doing this because like if it if like if i didn't have like talentless nana i would probably have stopped doing my channel for like a, lo a long time ago fair enough because yeah, like it's, it, it, it's it's been this monthly reminder of hey you have an upload you need to do so i'm at least uploading one thing every month which is better than uploading nothing yeah yeah it's just one of those things that like um it nana just keeps you hooked in it even if like you might be maybe a bit whelmed with the way it's progressing there's always the quality that talentless nana has oh 100 percent that keeps you hooked like this series is actually just like I, I I like I said I reread it like I am actually surprised at like how good this series is like mm -hmm. I, I generally I think that the quality of like maybe this is just my tastes but like I think generally the quality of anime has like gone up since like around 2018 2019 um and like like we don't get like long anime that are with like shonen we don't get like long anime that like have like a bunch of filler episodes we don't get like a lot of shows that like ha they're always just it feels like there's a lot more depth to like a lot of shows but that may just be because of like i'm not watching a lot of the garbage no fair enough um i i agree with you i think um in the 2010s there's been a definite increase from uh moving on from uh, doing weekly episodes to doing seasonal episodes, uh, especially for the big shonen, and there's been uh, more emphasis on creating short, impactful stories in uh, the shonen magazines rather than uh, trying to compete with the big three back in the day and trying to create long-running battle shonens. And so this shift in, in trends is basically giving us like small little gems, and Talonless Not is definitely one of those that we found are still enjoying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I also think it's like before I feel like a lot of it was like trope based a lot of anime was like very tropey whereas I feel like a lot of anime nowadays are like they're trying to be their own story and I think that like that's yeah. given us like a lot of really good stories like I think 2016 2019 is like when that started really starting yeah fair enough I have watched a lot more seasonal anime recently than I ever have like before and like i'm just generally impressed like by the by all this stuff being like actually good <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely and this is not to obviously anyone listening this is not us like taking a piss at anything during the 2000s or the 90s or 80s every era had their classics their like masterpieces yeah we're coming at it from an industrial kind of point of view where the industry was more focused on pumping out longer form mangas during the the peak time of bleach naruto one uh, one piece one piece is still going on on i know <laughs> until the heat death of the universe was it wasn't it like three years ago that we heard about like oh the uh the final the final arc, the final arc. <laughs> the, the final arc is still going he's been saying that every single year since the 90s i'm pretty sure he just probably just like one of those things is like like he sets an alarm on his phone like oh you gotta write the final arc now and then he probably postpones it. <laughs> See, I'm waiting for people who have actually read One Piece gonna gonna say in the comments like, "Oh shit! How dare you? Trust me, it's been no, it's I... been marching towards this conclusion this entire time for the past five years." I have read. Okay, this might be a slight tangent. I hope you don't mind, but I have read 
100 chapters of One Piece. And honestly, even just reading the beginning 100 chapters of One Piece, it is really great what Oda has done in, with One Piece. So there's a clear there's a clear direction, and I had a fun time reading it so far. Monica, you were saying? My friend made me watch like a cut of One Piece. I watched like the first episode, like I think they called it One Pace. And like even that, like oh, yeah. it's it. I can I can see that it's like got something to it. It's not like yeah, the... it's it's not like I, and 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 for for those of you who are watching, it's like she's dissing One Piece. Like you gotta understand, I I'm not a shonen person like at all. So like the fact that I'm willing to like show even that much respect like means a lot. <laughs> no, I I understand you, Monica. And for me, like um, Battle Shonen, I do enjoy my about Battle Shonen from time to time. But there is there's this um, I think this uh I don't know this wholesome quality One Piece has. There's like this inner inner like um, mag magic it kind of carries. I don't know. It feels like you're watching like some like uh Saturday cartoons as a kid. You know that's the kind of vibes it gives me, and it, it's pretty wholesome. Okay. And I'm sure One Piece fans can relate to that because that, that's the reason why they stick with it for so long. Because every week they're reading a new chapter, something amazing happens and just gives them that, you know, a little dose of happiness for, for that, you know, time of the week. I can only really imagine. I, I haven't read in two de two de depth into One Piece. Um, I guess I guess if we if we're completely off topic, but I guess I still want to I, I want to still want to comment on this. But like I think no, that. It, I think that my I think that the only shonens uh, I've actually like. I think my favorite shonen is My Hero Academia, but like just because like it focuses on like dramatic storytelling, and it like a lot of the times it feels like a lot of a lot of shonen would be solved if the two characters sat down and like talked talked to each other for a bit, like you know as soon as you talk about your feelings and like this entire story falls apart. Um, but I feel like My Hero Academia, at least, like, they do that. And it's, like, a lot of shonen is also, like, very, like, simple and two-dimensional, where it's like, oh, this is the good guy, this is the bad guy. You have to beat the good, you have to beat the bad guy. Now, blah. And, and... Fair enough, yeah. And Macadamia is just like, hey, it's not like that. We're gonna have, like, really good dramatics, right? Like, the only reason why, like... Macadamia, like I haven't like why I dropped Macadamia is just like one I didn't like how Endeavor was treated because he's like literally this like he beats his wife and abuses his children and it's just like he they this the story treats him like he has like a redemption arc even though he didn't change at all. It, it it kind of glosses over that, which is quite frustrating, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other thing is just like I do not like how this story treats its women characters. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it it is quite unfortunate how the woman characters are treated, which is why I'm I'm feeling uh, very positive with the recent. Uh, Talentless uh, Nana. <laughs> See, like <laughs> Talentless Nana is one. Talentless Nana treats its female characters a lot better. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I was um, on the topic of shonen though, like the recent shonen such as uh, Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't know if you've have you tried reading them or. Watching? No. Um, uh, I, I have. They're very, very adult. Very, very scary. Not, uh, not yeah. for me. Not for me. Yeah. Um. Very graphic. But they have a very well-rounded cast of characters, and they pretty much have moved on past from the tropes. And while there's obviously still certain tropes because they are still battle shonen, they treat their female characters infinitely more better than the way they were treated. Like maybe in the 2000s or in the 90s so i mean yeah i hope so right see see people yeah. be like oh soccer is useless and then they don't they, they don't realize like hey that was on purpose like that was that's, that's the writer's fault not hers yeah exactly and yeah like um yeah seeing these new shonens kind of evolve past uh these tropes and try to be more like um gray in the morality and more philosophical as well as having characters with depth from like like all genders, it, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I guess we got off topic. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that while we're talking about like anime, uh, let's talk about the anime, the talentless non anime. Um, like, are we is are we gonna ask the big question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the big question? <laughs> are we getting a season two? I don't know. <laughs> I 
I don't really, as much as I, like, as much as it kills me to say it, like, you have no idea if, like, this story, like, immediately after the manga ends, it gets so interesting. Like, it goes on from being, like, a somewhat tropey, like, a, a, a not very tropey survival game story to, like, a story that has, like, a completely on its own. It blows me away. But I don't know, because the the way that Japan decides, like, oh, is this series going to get a season two or not, um, is dependent on Blu-ray sales, as far as I remember. And mm -hmm. as far as I remember, that the Japanese Blu-ray sales were not that great with Talent mm -hmm. Uh which is which is very much indicative of we're likely not getting a season two. I think we talked about this before, and you were like, "What are the odds that it's like just that they're waiting to give more time to the story?" Like the first season, right? It encompasses like the 20, 27 chapters, mm -hmm. and but that's with the series being like more episodic, even. But like mm -hmm. nowadays, I like I do think like if they were to do a season two. It would start from like the moment that that season one ended off, and like there's so many good ending points for a, for a second season to start, like uh, to end off at. Like I think that like it, if it's starting from there, then it would probably end like around the My personal guess is end of the twin arcs. That's what I was thinking too. After like the the revelation of like mm -hmm. that. Hey, surprise! Guess who's been hugged? But guess who's been behind your trauma all along? That's right, the guy you trusted. Because yeah, it's a fantastic cliffhanger. Because season one ends with probably a pretty mind blowing cliffhanger where you see parts of Nana crumbling away, and you see obviously the death of Michiru. Rest in peace. No. And, My, like... and you see part of Nana's humanity kind of shining in that moment, and you're like, oh, the story's gonna change, and then cuts to black. With season two, ending it with Nanao's revelation that he's alive, it immediately, you know, mirrored. Oh yeah, one hundred. I, I I get that one hundred percent. That is actually like yeah, that's good. Because I was imagining season three would end with like the beginning of the the current arc, the yeah. beginning of the the yeah. camp arc. Because yeah. like, look, th this series seems dead out to traumatize everyone who watches it, and I feel like that's like these are the perfect ending points to traumatize the viewers. <laughs> Absolutely, it's like perfect traumatizing point. And what blows my mind is like, obviously, like going back at it now is just how many amazing like cliffhangers Loose Boy has written into the story. Oh, one hundred percent. You forget these obviously because we're waiting for so long for each chapter. But you know, like you said, having a reread or discussing them again, it kind of reminds you. Oh wow, Loose Boy actually made it feel like this is a season end. We're moving on to the next season. You know, it felt like he had a plan and he chalked it out and he wrote it down, and he mm -hmm. executed it. It's honestly, like, a really big shame. All I'm gonna say is that if Michiri had survived, maybe it would have been, like, a happy enough story that people would have, uh, bought the Blu-rays and we would have had gotten season two. Blame, blame. Honestly. How, uh, oh, sorry, just curious. How much do you think the sad downer ending played into the sales? Or do you think people lost interest from episode one? Like, when the whole Nanao thing happened? I think that... It's one of those things where, like, I don't really know. Because we, we do, there has been, like, a history, like, I do know other shows that have gone for, like, a similar, uh, trick the male audience into thinking the show's for them by, like, having a, a, a seemingly male main character only for them to be assassinated, uh, halfway through the episode or, like, beginning of the episode and then, yeah. like, never hear from them again. Um... Even though in this case we we have very much heard from that main character who was assassinated supposedly, uh, but that's manga spoilers. Um, yeah. So I think it could be like a definitely a decent amount. I think that a lot of the people that like are whining slash complaining, it's I think it's a lot bigger. I think it's one of those things where it's like it's a tiny minority, but like it's a very loud voice because they're very upset. Yeah, we have to consider that this is the Japanese audience, uh, and they probably have completely different um, thought, like feelings and thoughts and opinions. Yeah. So whatever, whatever they disliked would probably be completely different to what we dislike. Oh, that's so true. I imagine that is true. I imagine the Blu-ray sales probably did not work mainly because um, 
I think it was just bad timing for the enemy, and I think the studio itself. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like the enemy was pretty. Like I enjoyed the enemy, but I would like it would be a lie for me to say it's the best adaptation it could have gone for because it feels like it's. Um, it's it it just works as an adaptation if that makes sense. Like it's a solid seven out of ten, but I think with uh, maybe other animes that were airing that time, probably taking the spotlight, Nana kind of fell in the background. I definitely think it's one of those things where it's like they do the thing that like most series do when they have like mm -hmm. uh when they have like a massive turn turning revelation in the series uh, in the first part of the series. Where like they they market it as like a show, and then it turns out to be actually a different show. The problem is that they marketed it as like this really generic shonen. Like they marketed it, it to be like, oh, we're gonna be this group of people that take down an enemy of humanity, and I'm willing to bet that like a large majority of people saw that, and like I'm not gonna bother watching it. And then like they, yeah. like sure the the Western anime community, right? Like there was like a massive surge, like oh shit. That whole thing happened crazy, but like I don't yeah. know if that I don't know if that if a similar like conversation happened because like we, between like Re Zero, uh, Tokyo Ghoul, like it's Madoka, like that like maybe like the first couple times like I'm just naming shows off the top of my head that have like have started with like a really like started seeming as one anime and then it became something different. Um. So like I, I like that's just like a common enough thing. I almost wonder if like if they had led with the pitch of like, hey, here's this girl. She's gonna dispose of the enemies of humanity. She's got a talent. She's she's talentless and she's got to beat up all the talented. So it's gonna be cool. I wonder if they had led with that. If the series would be a lot more popular because. Um, yeah, uh, I completely agree with you because I was thinking like in terms of the marketing of the series itself in general It was very hard leaning on the the initial prim premise of like uh, enemies of humanity and Nana's here Maybe as Nana's love interest and Nana's the main character like it, it leans so much on that that it probably turned off a lot of the people who, who would have been interested with how the story developed further on because it, I feel like what they should have done when they marketed the series because mm -hmm. honestly I thought like reading the synopsis on Mal and because I, I watched the show like way after it aired mm. and seeing ev everything surrounding it was very much giving me like this is like a, a battle shonen with maybe like set in a school with some mystery going on and so it's a completely different idea that people get and I feel like if the marketing team or whoever was behind Nana at least hinted that there is like there's something deeper in here. There's like, there's a maybe a twist coming. Maybe if they at least hinted in the second about like what happens in past episode one, then I think there would have been like a, a lot more interest in the series as a whole. And that would have definitely benefited, I think, the sales in general. I think that there's like, yeah, there's a good reason why a majority of shows that like do the, those these kind of twists that are successful start like mm -hmm. open up on the twist and then they go back. Like Attack on Titan, right? Um, it starts with the moment, like, on that day, mankind received a grin reminder, and then it goes back to see the story. And it's like... Oh. Like, maybe if we had, like, Naro off a cliff, and he's like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Are you an enemy of humanity? And then you, like, go back and you still reserve, like, oh, shit, Nana's the one who does it. But, like, you still hint, like, hey, some shit's gonna be going on. Yeah, absolutely. Like, keeping Nana in the... You could... You could... You could you like uh, yeah like not like not even like so you you just see his like you just see him holding onto the the rope and then you you see like the panning shot of like him like doing that and like yeah like yeah that's fantastic. like and even like and even like re zero right which also does like a similar thing um mm -hmm. but it's but it opens up with like them being murdered because it's like they don't want to just like assume it's just a a basic isekai. Uh, exactly. Also, uh, uh, don't come at us. That's in the first five seconds of ReZero, so it's not a spoiler. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's exactly um, uh, what I think Nana should have approached it. Um, obviously, we um, we saw something in the first episode that felt like it was going to tip up. Maybe they're going to switch us up at the end, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, sorry, what they did. And it worked, and it's it's been working for 
you know, however long the manga has been going on. Uh, one thing I wanted to add to this, um, I was just having a look while we were talking at mm-hmm. the studio that made uh, Talentless Nana, uh, mm-hmm. Studio Bridge, and they uh, seem quite packed <laughs> with animes, and so it really just kind of dampens my hopes on them doing a season two. Right it, it really first... stinks, right? Because yeah, the I, I genuinely think that like the first episode is when it turns it from to a shonen to like. A survival game sort of series mm-hmm. but then i think from the like from that exact moment from the second season on like the exact moment that the second season would pick up is when i think tell Nana like really hits a stride and becomes like something entirely unique like Absolutely. it's so upsetting because like as much as i like if you just give this series the second season it will pay off but also it's like mm-hmm. It's just sad it's, that... All I'm saying is that if more people knew about this series and, like, was, like, gave it a shot and, like, read the manga afterwards... Because I think that a lot of people are like, oh, let's wait... I used to be one of those people, right? That's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the second season of the anime. And I, I used to be one of those people, but, like, Talent Lasana, as you know, fucking traumatized me. So I didn't really have a choice. Yeah, fair enough. I had to find out what happens. Absolutely. Mm, going back to Studio Bridge. Hmm. Okay, Sorry. so they're doing uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh show that's been airing since 2022 and still. Is it Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens? It's called Yu-Gi-Oh Go Rush. Ah, so sorry, Yu-Gi-Oh Go Rush. That's the second season to Sevens. So, so that's probably infinitely more profitable too because it's just like one of those. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh series. I mean, it, it is Yu-Gi-Oh. That's like I'm saying one of the biggest names in the industry. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, they're also back for the first season of 2024 because they're doing Shaman King, which is a manga with a decent <laughs> sized following. Yeah, it's. Oh, that's really funny because it shows Talent Asana as like, being like one of their better selling series. Oh, they also made Fairy Tale. No way in hell are we getting a Talent Asana season 2. Oh, that's suffering. Rest in peace. I mean. Did, did Fairy Tale not get, I suppose, a bunch of sequels? I mean, it is Fairy Tale, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's Fairy Tale is. Though, apparently speaking, it is, like, one of their more popular series, uh, according to my anime list, but I don't know, like. You probably have to check Blu ray sales in order to, like, Japanese Blu ray sales in order to, like, actually indicate whether or not it's going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder what's the Japanese equivalent of Mal, if they even have. Because it would be, because it would make more sense for us to compare it to the Japanese audience's perspective. Well, I think one thing we can do is that we can check what other anime came out around the same time as Talentless Nana and like check their Blu-ray sales. <laughs> oh my God, Fall 2020 was so packed. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can I read out the names that immediately pop up to me? Of course. All right. So Jujutsu Kaisen. Which is one of the hottest shonens right now. Mm. We have Haikyuu, um, the biggest sports shonen airing right now. Uh, Tony Kaku Kawaii. I have not seen this, but it's one of the more popular romance shows. And then we have um, Dan Machi. I think that's the short form of it. It's a popular isekai. I think I'm, I'm not even sure if it's isekai. I'm, I'm not familiar with this, but it has a quite big following. Seems like a fantasy show. Um, and then you have the Moriarty show, you have um, Irregular at Magic High School. Um, and yeah, it's it's like two rows until Nana shows up. Yeah. <sighs> oh god. It, it, it was a packed. Oh god. You got even Higurashi coming out as well. Oh yeah. This is like one of the. One of the series here has already gotten like a season two. It's not. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's not like abysmal. Like it's not a zero percent chance, but it's it's pretty low. That's actually kind of sad. Yeah, Moriarty. You see Moriarty <laughs> the Patriot. Are you on full twenty twenty now? Yeah. And that one got a season two. And okay. But that that didn't. Well, I think they probably had a season two in mind from the beginning because the manga just ended. I think when season one aired, so it was like planned. 
But, you know, who knows? I mean, even if that got a season two. I mean, here's the thing of like, are things that are lower than it got a, had received a oh. sequel? Oh god, um, that brings me to another show here that I think um, some of our listeners might understand. Um, apparently, there's a Yuri show called Adichi to Shimamura. I mean, that's the English name. I think. Oh. And that, and they've been waiting on a season two for a while for this as well, but this hasn't gotten a season two either. Oh, this looks cute. I might see. I'm I'm gonna add that to my to watch list, which means I'm probably never gonna watch it, but like I'll add it to the list. Oh, fair enough. But like I heard really good stuff about it, and it's one of and they're suffering like us. So we are fellow sufferers. We feel your pain. Twinsies, fellow 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 gay anime. Yes, Talentless Mom is a gay anime. You can't stop me. Um, yeah, I'm looking at any other shows that might have gone into season two, like Below Nana and. A lot of these are like season twos, like Love Life, second season, Golden Kamui, third season. Like, hey, all I'm gonna say is that Talentless Mom was more popular than. Uh, is, is more popular uh, among the Western uh, community. Uh, then Golden Comedy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, studio, come on. Uh, Golden Kamui is uh, very interesting, though. I'm obviously. I don't know if you've. Have you heard of it before? I've heard the name, which means like it's probably like it's. Which means it's probably like decent, or at least it's popular. I think it's quite popular in Japan, hence why it has so many seasons. Mm. It's like it's very. It's less popular in uh, West because. The West are watching it from the anime, while Japan already has the inbuilt fan base because most of them just read the manga. The anime is just kind of like there. All the more reason to make uh, Talentless Nana season two. Come on, hurry up! Yeah, for real. <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest reading Golden Kamui, movie, but it is a very different <laughs> story to Talentless Nana. Pretty much set in like historical Japanese uh, Russian wartime era. And it's a bunch of factions looking for um, a, a pot of gold, as far as I can remember. It's basically one piece, but set in Japanese-Russian wartime. Speaking of one piece, I'm joking, because uh, we were talking about one piece earlier. Um, yeah, it's, oh, it's... That was a full circle moment, bringing up one piece again. <laughs> no. Do you remember that moment? It was like 20 minutes ago. It was crazy. Um, um, and I think we talked about mostly everything, but I do want to touch upon the topic that will actually like topic that I don't know. It's the 87 and 80, uh, 88. Like, what are our thoughts on these two chapters that just came out recently? We we need to talk about the recent chapters, of course. Yeah, we probably should have started that first, before, but like, I don't know. That's kind of funny. Oh. It's fair enough. I mean, we're letting everyone get used to our discussion. And yeah. Once they're all used to the way we speak, what we talk about, and getting reintroduced to Nana, they probably have missed a lot of the stuff about Nana. Um, talking about the latest chapters feels like a nice way to conclude the episode, I suppose. Well, because we also have this, uh, that's one more topic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. The story is not completed. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll come back right to that. But yes, chapter 87 <laughs> and 88. We are seeing now... Um, uh, a proper confrontation between Nana and Nana and. Their... Oh wait, wait, wait! Sorry, we have to get into it. We have to do another topic first. The irregular release release schedule. You know the story not being uploaded at the same time every month, even on Crunchyroll, and like piracy sites just not even updating it at all. <laughs> like this has been a frequent occurrence. Yeah, it's 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 quite poor on Crunchy, and I guess it it's unfortunate. I. I don't know, Crunchy probably doesn't get much clicks on the Nana side of the website or something, so I, I don't even know really how it works. I, like, if anyone so knows here's, Crunchy here's, their chapters... Here's my thing. Know, but... Now, I've actually looked for English copies of the physical manga. The fact that I can't find any, but I can find French copies... Uh, almost, almost, like, directly indicates to me that... Crunchyroll paid for an exclusive license for the show, for the manga, I should say. Um, and that, like, 
pisses me off in one way because I had to like buy the Japanese manga from like a Japanese service. Mm. <laughs> Which is an absolute pain in the butt. Um and then them like not even have like having the decency to like upload it at like the the same time every month, like at a reasonable time. It feels like they've like given up on the series almost, which is like really depressing because it's like we're such avid fans, but like in, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's it, it's weird. It's I think they probably had a contract with um, the studio once when the anime aired because I feel like Crunchy probably had an exclusive right to maybe air the anime specifically on the website, and with that they probably got the manga deal as well. But I guess they didn't expect it to. Not like they probably expected it to perform way better than it currently is being received. I mean, yeah, like just... the, the initial boom of like it's among us, the anime. Well, it's kind of like kind of hard to envision like why that would fail. Mm. But it's so weird. But like now they're, I think they're just like um, lazy because they, again, they probably did not get exactly what they expected. They probably expected I don't know the next My Hero Academia or the next. Yeah. Slayer or something. <laughs> I don't know. They probably but, expected, yeah. like, the next big show, and, and now they're just, like... It's, like, very reluctant, because it's, like, we are, like, a very niche anime. And, like, it is kind yeah. of upsetting to, like, think of it from that perspective, because it's, like... Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are still holding out copium for Season 2, I'm sorry, but it's not happening. I mean, I'm, I'm still not holding out copium, and, like, um... One of the reasons why is, like, it's just... You can never predict, because... Recently, there was this show called um, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. Yeah. Was, um, the, the English name. Uh, it, season 1 was uh, a weird adaptation because they swapped arcs around, they skipped arcs, they ended it in a weird place. It felt like they wanted to just advertise the manga solely and nothing else. And now, we're getting a season 2 for that uh, out of nowhere. So, there, there, there is hope. There is, like, some hope. Like, there, like yeah, there, like, and I think another thing is, like, Truly, if uh, the McDonald's isekai was able to get a second season, it can get, like, this can get the second season. Like, truly nothing is out of the question, but, like, the fact that they're, like, dragging their heels just to upload, just to upload the chapters that they have, like, paid exclusively for, um, feels, feels like insulting and it's like it's hard it's hard to be excited for a season two when like they can't even do it and like the consequences of this is that like the the piracy sites are also like bit not uploading at all like the like the reason why a lot of my videos are like fairly irregular and there was even like last time where i was like completely like multiple months behind like like because they they haven't even been uploading it at all mm -hmm. like they it, it's just that's so aggravating because it's like absolutely i am trying to like i i do want to read the series like i do and like i i could read it on crunchyroll uh for some of the sometimes but i abhor crunchyrolls um i absolutely have nothing but disdain for crunchyrolls um reading like the manga the way that they present manga they they put like the two pages next to each other and it's like really really small whereas i like to if you've seen any of my things i like to I read one page at a time and like i zoom in so it's like really only half a page at a time mm -hmm. because it just like it helps me like process it better and like the fact than get and stop yourself from getting spoiled yeah essentially there's literally exactly what it is like i get spoiled on the page next to it before i've even read this page and it's like, I don't know, I, I would absolutely, like, there was a time when I was paying for Crunchyroll, and I wasn't, and I and I still used the piracy sites to read Talentless Nana, because I just preferred it. Uh, and I don't pay for Crunchyroll anymore, because I can't really afford to. Um, and I, I just, I do not feel guilty about it whatsoever, I'm sorry. If, if, if you, if they went back and made their manga, like, I could actually, like, read it the way I want to read it, I would pay for Crunchyroll. But, um... Fair enough. Yeah, it's it's quite disappointing as a service and just for us fans because like it's it's the bare minimum they can do, but they still kind of slacking. Mm -hmm. Are even are, are these chapters even released yet on Crunchyroll? 
I'm gonna look up. Trenchy roll. You look up. Uh, apologize for the weird kind of zigzaggy topic uh, conversation we're going on. We're uh, don't don't worry. Best. Don't worry. Uh, this is what editing is for. Yeah. And uh, they won't know. The, the the most important thing is we're having fun, and that you guys listening are having fun too. They don't even have chapter eighty-eight up yet. It's eighty-seven. <laughs> what? That's it's been it's been like a whole week. Right? I know. <laughs> okay. So as if to exemplify our point. <laughs> That that is so stupid. And like it's and it's funny because it's definitely one of the better cliffhangers we've had in a while. And this is the chapter they've decided to slack on. Yeah, it, it, this is that is comical. It, yeah, they're taking a piss at this point. <laughs> oh, you want to read Nana? Wait for it. In the next fucking one. When we get the next chapter. This is just I, I, comical. It's like this was it came out on the twi on like the eighteenth, by the way. We're recording this on the twenty fifth. Okay, yeah. Which is like it, it's it's more than a week. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, it's, it's absolutely right. comical. But yeah, um let's I guess let's uh, now is the time to talk about the last two chapters that you Yes. Uh, read. Um first I wanna know your thoughts and then we can bounce off from there. Um Honestly, I, I'm very, uh, I'm very excited, very, yeah, the whole thing of, like, Soroka being like, hey, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna kill you now, no, no, it's like, oh, shit, <laughs> and, and I definitely think that it's next to impossible that Nanao doesn't join, like, the current team, mm -hmm. like, especially with that, that feels like the, the indicator, like, yeah, there's no way in fuck that he's gonna stay being their enemy, like, within within the next five chapters, at most. Yeah. Like, here's one of the things that- there's been a huge discourse on when Soroka revealed the whole, uh, beasts, uh, Oh, yeah. Where, oh, yeah. Um, ta talented people will turn into beasts, and a lot of people dismissed it as him using his, uh, meta, oh. you know, gaslighting tactics. Yes, yes. Um, but here's the thing, um, even when Nanao left and he started speaking with uh, Rin, um, he had no yeah, reason to, other... I guess, not be transparent about uh, what he was doing or just like- That is like, true. Kind of sho shove it in her face, but he didn't, so- But he I did before. Still... Like, it was, like, like, on one hand, like, I do see, like, like, this is probably the closest thing we've had to them, like, uh, other than, like I said, with the twins, to them, like, originally indicating one direction and throwing a different direction. But, like, I think, like, I I don't know, I'm at the point where, like, I do not trust a single thing this man says. I feel like once you orchestrate an entire child's life to be traumatized in order to work as a child soldier as a joke to, like, fuck over your old co-workers because they messed with your politics... Uh, I feel like you lose your right to be trusted by everybody who's reading you. Mm -hmm. And I think that especially the, the conversation that he had with uh, with uh, Kyoya's sister, with Jen, um, as soon as, uh, like, that her, uh, her saying, that's never happened. You're right, maybe we should uh, put it on the news or some shit. Maybe we should have aired something about it. Like, it's been very clearly indicated that he's bullshitting, and like, I, I'm I'm willing to chalk up uh, this could this could just be copium, but I'm willing to chalk up him still being afraid to uh, an act of mistranslation to like a mistranslation. I'm I'm willing to like, or like, or, or honestly, just like him like maintaining the act in case like no no looked away or some shit or maybe he's afraid about something else like he's afraid of like what not if nano were to like rebel against him or something maybe he's afraid of the rebellion that's a good point my stance on hit suroka right now is that he's definitely <laughs> gaslighting i mean there's definitely a level of gaslighting in there but i think there's a level of truth that we would eventually get revealed to us later on because i don't think it's the whole truth there he's definitely covering the truth with lies but there's something specific in this entire backstory that 
is directly maybe emotionally related to Soroka's backstory, which is why he's this committed to doing all of these things. But I don't buy the whole talented will become monsters thing because it uh, it was one of the points someone brought up uh, on the server, Discord server, that you know made me realize like, oh, it basically means that Nana and Erfan is in the wrong because if they're all destined to be monsters, then they're just fighting a, fighting for a limited amount of freedom. Like maybe a few years of freedom, and then they'll just cause havoc on humanity. Yeah, it's a weird direction for the author to go, unless there's like obviously there's something. Like it's it's one of those like like it it would defeat the entire point of the series. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah, we just have to wait and see like what Soroka's cooking up in that you know crazy head of his. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's it's what yeah, yeah like we kind of just have to wait and see what happens. Um yeah and then we kind of get the next chapter eighty eight oh sorry eighty seven ended with a cliffhanger of getting that um uh uh, uh mirror to when Nana called <laughs> Nana an enemy of humanity that that oh yeah yeah that is a. Uh... Mm -hmm. That is a classic anime oh shit moment before the credits roll. <laughs> mhm. Mm and then we had um, uh, Nanao uh, teasing her, um, poke, trying to provoke her, using even Michiru as like his leverage to provoke her and stuff. And mm -hmm. it, it, it did react. And it was, it's it's fascinating how he feels like he's toying with her. Um, again, uh, like it's. Like he could have ended it all right there, but obviously Nanao wants to maybe convey like what he's feeling to Nana, other than maybe torturing her for a bit. Maybe he also wants to convey his feelings and maybe his situation to Nana so she can maybe either join his side or do something about it. And Nana obviously wants him to join her. So an eventual team up is in the works. It, I think it's all but assured. I think that especially given like like I said, but like, I think like the moment he came back to, back like alive, I think I thought it was like complete, complete, like they're gonna team up together, because like the that like n to her to her right to to Nana, her teaming up with the now was like the ultimate like redemption for her character. Yeah. Um, that of course, yeah. essentially her making amends with Nana is pretty much a like. like the one, the first mistake she started off the manga with, like, fixing mm -hmm. that feels like endgame material, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, and, uh, I have to give myself, I have to say this, as a, as a Nana Chiru for life, I'm sorry, uh, all y'all kill Nana shippers, I'm sorry. But, like, the fact it's, like, uh, the fact they specifically call out with Chiru, just like, oh, my heart. No, fair enough. I mean, he, Nana knows exactly where um, it hurts Nana, and Michiru was one of the, still is one of the closest people that she's had. Um, with Kyo Nana, it's it's one of those weird things because I do ship Kyo Nana, but in general, like in terms of like uh, relationships, they've been kept purposely apart from each other throughout the entire manga. So they haven't Indeed. developed. They haven't developed uh, like each other. Rather, they're there to support each other during the arcs, and they're like shown as like um like kind of like in cliche rom-coms you kind of have the honestly like i <laughs> will they won't they kind of, they kind of have it but it's it's a weird place because again nana is not a romance manga so it doesn't fit feel like they fit in that aspect so. it's it's not necessarily but you have to, you can't deny the the one scene where she like threw himself threw herself at her like please help me like like that is almost intentionally like a bone that they threw to Kionana shepherds. Like wait, wait, which 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 scene again? Sorry. Do you remember during the during the time where Nana was like just like heard about the trauma thing and she, she's like she's gonna talk to Kyoya about everything and then like the suspect like hey Nana you're suspected of murder again and it's like fuck now I can't tell everyone. And it's the the part where she throws herself at Kyoya, like I'm gonna tell you everything. Oh, like that scene, yeah, that like that that manga panel specifically feels like very much like throwing a bone to Kyonana so, Shippers. Like it's it's such a weird like it's obviously it's romantically coded, but me reading it obviously like I'm like it, it's definitely I guess like romantically coded because that's that's usually 
like uh like a cliche they use in rom-coms where they throw themselves like they push the character against a the wall they even have a specific name for that in japan uh, what's it called i'm curious oh, um, okay Wait, 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 uh, I think it starts with a gate. uh, if, if I can figure it... Okay, yeah, I found it, uh, Kabidon, Kabidon. If you just type in Kabidon on Google, you'll see, like, a bunch of anime characters doing the whole wall thing on mm -hmm. it. So it's, like, it's a, it's a definite romantic trope, but it felt like the author kind of was, like, force, forcing that scene, because it, it felt really out of place. It, that, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt. It, to me, I also just read it as, like, a traumatized person just like not knowing what to do like the walls are closing in and she's like leaning on anyone for help yeah, she needs exactly that's a great way of interpreting like she needs the support <laughs> and it's like a very like um and it's, since it's a very it, powerful it, move it, to do it yeah one, it conveys her desperate need for like someone to help her and that's you have to understand like nana is someone who is like i don't think she's like been hugged before in her life Absolutely, yeah. Other than, like, possibly with Machiru, I don't remember. Um, he did hug her. And she, she, oh, that's great. And see, it's like, other than that, right, she's like, especially because she's feeling so alone, especially after, like, the revelation, right? Uh, like, hey, all of your trauma is actually manufactured by me. Like, of course, she's, like, desperate and alone, you know? Yeah, she needs Anyone she needs would be. Someone to be. Anyone would work, yeah. Uh, it's, it's fascinating because... Yeah, like here's the three relationship. Michiru and Nana definitely felt like, you know, full sales, you know, full sail ahead until obviously you know what happened. Uh, all, hey, look, all I'm saying is that Nana Shiru was the canon ending, but then they realized that the story would have would have had to end because you can't make Nana suffer anymore, so they had to kill off Michiru. Honestly, uh, I I agree. I mean, because like that, it it very much felt like that felt like an endgame ship. Honestly, at that point, by the time you know episode eleven or twelve um, equivalent manga chapter rolled out, it felt like that was the way it was going. But you know, author obviously had some plans in his head, and unfortunately, Michiru had the the, the the wrong end of the plan, I guess. And then with no 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 no, you can argue that they have the entire you know. I'm not gonna say I ship them because I don't. But I think I genuinely think Nana, na, Nana, Nano, like, feel like Endgame. Just because it's like, from a dramatic perspective, I think it's just like such a, such a satisfying story. Like, Tatlas Nana just becomes all the better if these two end up get, get, getting together. Mm. Though I also, like, understand the perspective of a Kyo Nana shipper. It's like, mm. these characters are characters that, like, have been, like, like I said when I was reading like the couple chapters, like the, the when they're working together and planning, like that was really good. I liked that. I like their, I like their, I like their friendship. Yeah, their friendship. <laughs> Emphasis on the word friendship. No, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Look, like, yeah, it, again, you, you can call it friendship because like it's it hasn't been clarified what it is. I mean, it is friendship at this point, and it is friend. Uh, so like, it's also be like kind of weird to like focus on that. It's like, hey, uh, all of talented kind is gonna be persecuted, and I'm gonna be killed too. But hey, Kyoa, can I can I can I have a hug? I love you, by the way. Like, then <laughs> that'd be kind of weird. And that is honestly why I think it's 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 na 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 no. It's because like I just think that the the story has like been building up to it ever since he came back. Oh, I, essentially, it's a very interesting perspective, and I agree with the fact that na 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 feels like their their current mirrors right now in in terms of arcs, uh, especially in the camp. We see exactly that they're reflective of each other, um, of how uh nana was once in nana's place and how nana mm -hmm. was once in nana's place and i mean there's there's so much development going on for each of them it feels like kyoya obviously feels kind of sidelined in terms of development it, it's a very weird thing because like in terms of nana 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 sees nana as someone that she wants to redeem herself with like make amends with and then with kyoya she sees a very good friend which obviously gets uh the shippers into that whole relationship so the author has carefully balanced each relationship and has written them except for one. Oh yeah of course <laughs> they, they literally shot her corpse it's like yeah she's not coming back by the way yeah there's no need for that that was too much 
I don't know, it, it just, it killed any hope I have. Like, hey, no, 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 came back. No hope is material can go back to, but they shot her corpse. There's no way in fuck she's coming back. Yeah, that's so, uh, that was like over dramatic. And Soroko just being a dick as usual. And it's one of those um, things where it's like, he didn't even need, like, story wise, it doesn't make sense either. Yeah. Like, it's just one of those things where he's conveying to the audience, like, hey, I'm sorry, but you're, 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 yeah, like, it's basically just the way of revealing to the audience, hey, don't trust this guy, he's still a dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, the corpse was cold. There was no need for that. <laughs> it was like, I was like, when I read that, I'm like, okay, come on. Like, the author is just p p trying to piss us off now. <laughs> well, I think that's exactly what they were doing. They're, they're communicating that he's, because he, like, because before, right, he was like being very warm and affectionate to, to, to Nana. Uh -huh. And like they're like, hey, what if this guy is actually the good guy? You know, and the fact that immediately after like we saw that scene, and like sometime after that, we still trust him is like people like I cannot get over how well written this series is. Like the fact that that happened and we still trust this character. There are so many characters in like all of anime. He's like, oh, he's an expert manipulator. But then like when you actually watch like and like watch the show and like see them, like he has the charisma of a expired cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like like literally no one is going to be manipulated by this person. Mm -hmm. But like Suroka, like for the longest time, like and still some people like still believe that this guy's a good person. Despite everything that's happened, you know? It, it's just one of those things. I think they're not trying to... Well, at this point, I think... I don't I don't, I don't. don't see this as, like, a negative thing. I see this as, like, a... This is how good this guy is at writing. No, no, absolutely. I'm not saying you see it as that way. I'm, I think the conversation is mm. now steered into... We all know he's a shit person. I think the conversation now steered into whether what he's doing has truth. Like, has some truth or not. Because he's still so much of an enigma, and I wonder if we'll get that revelation maybe the further we get into this Nana or Nana fight. Who knows? Like, it feels like we're like it's due for a Suroka backstory in a sense, I guess. I think that will definitely happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Like given this series, I think that I, I do trust this series to like go like, hey, this guy isn't a completely awful being. I remember when I was rereading, actually, it felt like it came out of nowhere the the fact that the uh the, the the whole prison arc but it was actually like directly told to you it was going to happen earlier in the story like it was i i don't know if you remember this there was like a conversation where suroka was like speaking to an uh, a meeting person to like okay. uh, another politician and they were right. saying the and they were they were saying that they're going to set this whole thing up so I remember that. I remember those. Yeah, there were there's definitely like some foreshadowing there, which obviously we didn't know. I guess the scale of it until then. Yeah. Uh, I, I miss Jin, by the way. I do miss Jin. Well, uh, technically speaking, I don't miss Jin because I know it's his sister. Uh, but also, oh, okay. <laughs> like, there's no way in fuck at this point. It is it is ninety nine percent impossible. There's no way. Yeah, it's it's the one of the we gotta wait and see, and uh, yeah. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the future of this arc because now that Kyoya, now that Nana obviously wants to help Nana, but there's clear friction between her and Kyoya now. Or not clear friction, but there's somewhat oh. friction because Nana definitely wants to do the best for Nana, and she's a bit conflicted on, I guess, maybe killing him because I think that was one of the things that was brought up in Chapter 88 because she doesn't want to go back to her old self. Oh, 100 percent. Yoyo, on the other hand, he's like, oh, I'm ready to kill, uh, really to kill everyone in this place for my sister. So mm -hmm. I wonder if that would bring a conflict between them, like Nana's maybe decision to keep Nana alive might piss off or not piss off and will maybe jeopardize off. the mission, essentially. Jeopardize, exactly, yeah. And maybe might even get um, Kyoyo's sister killed because um, I feel like we haven't had a time travel chapter in a while, obviously. And the, I mean, she's... We, we still have, um, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting her name. What's her name? Shizuka. Yeah. Shizuka, the, yeah, the, the, the motorcycle in chan Like, yeah. I am very surprised that she's not dead yet. Because <laughs> she's, I mean, she, she, she almost, she literally represents a liability of, hey, if anything goes wrong, we can just, like, fix it. 
Yeah, I think what's I think uh, you know you know how loose boy likes to hurt us where it hurts the most. So I feel like we're definitely going to have like shit goes sideways moment. Maybe Kiyoya's sister does get killed, and then we go back in time. Yeah, and maybe somehow fixing that has her get killed, and they can't fix that because obviously you know maybe something like that just to yeah hone it. Yeah. I don't know. Like it could on be- one hand, like yeah, that that does feel like exactly what they what's gonna happen. Like, there's no way in hell that everyone gets out of this like Scott clean. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Um, and um, I actually do want um, like we've had so much like uh, Kyoya and Nana getting along pretty much all the time. And while we did have that whole island conflict thing, I don't think we've ever had them at conflict that be on the same side if that makes sense and i feel like we are kind of going in that direction right now oh yeah i definitely think that is like (sighs) it's weird like what do what do we do right and i'm so excited to like see the next chapter in like three years uh (laughs) 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 because we have to we have to make a month for it to come out and then honestly i think that the fact that the 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 i'm honestly really surprised that freedu didn't like shut down being given like the unofficial translations because i remember that free do was like really anti-piracy okay like very heavily anti-piracy but honestly like given the, the fact that this is even out on crunchyroll yet chapter 80 is even out on crunchyroll yet is fucking absurd to me yeah that's i i, I really don't believe it but uh, crunchyroll you know never never disappointing us <laughs> <laughs> with, with how low they go. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it's um also yeah that that's um so I guess any are we missing any topics? Yes, for our, the, our last topic uh, is like the thoughts on the arc as a whole and the story as a whole. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, perfect uh, wrap up topic. Hmm. You want to start us off? Um. Honestly, I'm cautiously optimistic. It almost feels like I don't know if any of you have seen ReZero season two part two, but it kind of feels like one of those moments where it's like, okay, you've suffered enough. The rest of this, the rest of this season is gonna be like uh, your comeback arc. It's gonna be like you've learned your lesson, you've you've done everything, and now you're gonna do it. Um. But also, I'm very cautiously like, Shizuka. Shizuka's existence means that she has to die in order for the story to like progress, okay. or like, in order, okay. well, in order for the story for like to have like meaningful tragedy, right? Yeah, I'm putting all my chips on. And also because of the fact that they have they they have deliberately murdered like every single lesbian relationship inside this show. <laughs> Oh, that's a good point as well. Um, he, the author, has made it a point to introduce a new um, partner just to kill them off in a gruesome fashion. Yeah, fucking really, really sad. Tbh. Um. Yeah. So Shizuka, I'm sorry. You're like your design's great and you have a great personality, but oh, I love her. I love her. Yeah, making making your making past the camp arc. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't really know who else would really die to have the same I think she, she's, she's, she's gonna sacrifice herself to save Gilia's sister, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Oh. They would probably need Kyoya's sister because she needs to still be Jin, and they need to maybe wrap up the Jin subplot, so they need Kyoya's sister alive at the end of this arc, and I don't know. Um, See, really the part that lost. I'm actually concerned about is like, mm-hmm. What happens when they escape? Like, cool, you've escaped now. We've uh, no. su- we've successfully finished season one of Promised Neverland. Um, now what? <laughs> like, they. I remember the plan was like to expose it to the public, but like, let's be honest, right? In reality, uh, very rarely is like the public being exposed, like the uh, the public being exposed to tragedy, like actually enough to like fix the tragedy exactly it, it's very uh, like idealistic like childish kind of yeah and, and this yeah. series feels like very like bitter it just it doesn't feel like it's gonna be like one of those naive series that like and then everything gets better 
Exactly. Like, there's definitely, it's definitely... Especially, especially given how, like, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Like, if, like, yeah, yeah, the politics completely changed and all the talented are considered to be, like, really bad people. Yeah, it's, it, it's definitely, like, a huge... It's kind of, like, very fascinating to see where the author will take it and whether... See, it, or see initially, I was thinking, you see, once, this, once this arc is done, then the story's over, but, like, and now I'm kind of, like, realizing, like, we're not even, like, halfway down, are we? Like, yeah, if the author was making sure everything makes sense, this should be the halfway point, because if he makes maybe another arc and that's the end, it would be way too rushed, I feel. Yeah, because, cause, like, considering that we've, we're, we're at, like, one of the low, like, this arc starts off at, like, probably the lowest point that Nana's ever been in. Mm. Like, one of the lowest points. Sorry, I will never get over it. Even if, yeah, like, I'll never get over what happens. Never forget. We will never forget me, true. No. But yeah, I, I agree. Like, the fact that um, Nana is making the change now, like, and actively, like, I mean, we've had the whole arc of her understanding her psyche understanding where she what she needs to do and now her acting on actively acting on it is now the beginning of her redemption and so we should probably see maybe a couple or three more arcs after this the arc is done to maybe see i'm encapsulate that mm -hmm. see i'm like one of the things that i really like is like how initially right she was all anything for the sake of a vision right and now she's like her feelings are getting away in the mission so it's like if nothing else proves like how her character has changed, yeah. there's that. Uh, basically, I'm very optimistic about the future as well, like you mentioned um, on your uh, thoughts on the story. Uh, and like, I feel like Loose Boy has not really disappointed us. Uh, like there's been some instances where some flashbacks he could have fleshed out a bit more for some of the side characters, but in general, Loose Boy has been hitting, giving us bangers every month and I mm -hmm. believe he'll continue to do so. And you know, I just can't wait because this arc's heating up and we're now at probably the peak of this arc and we're just probably going to keep on. This is the everything's coming together part. Like this is the, the now or never, the do, or, the do or die part of this arc. This is the turning point. Like this is the, to put it in the context of like, I guess another arc in this series, but this is the, this is the moment where like, they've called Soma and they're like, hey, um, by the way, it was actually him. <laughs> and like, this is the moment where like, every, all, everything starts. Like, it, this is where like, okay, we've built up, we've built up, we've built up, and now it's mm -hmm. time to start. It's time to now, duel. <laughs> and now we can eat the food Loose Boys cooked for us. <laughs> Indeed. Oh god. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it so far. And like, again, monthly waits, frustrating, but you know... <laughs> the, the monthly waits are frustrating. Uh, the monthly Sorry. and a half waits, because fucking Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the future. And honestly, like... Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just happy to be part of the community, even if I don't I'm not as active as I used to be. I feel like I've kind of fell off a bit with Nana, but I, you know, whenever a Nana conversation comes up, I'm I'm happy to talk about it. I'm just one of those I'm kind of the same. Uh, I think we'll 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 probably uh, hold more uh, conversations to, uh, too, um, more podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I, I just thought of another topic that I want to talk about, but we're probably going to save that for next time. Yeah. But we've been talking for like an hour and a half. Um, you need to get to bed wow. and I need to like edit and record all this. So um, it doesn't even feel like that. But yeah, that, that was I know it was a really good conversation. You're 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 I really love talking with you because we both like. I don't know, we yeah, just exactly. have that same, chemistry. Too. We gel. Yeah, we have that same synergy, you know, we feel each other. You know, mm -hmm. so. Okay, um... Do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, closing thoughts... Honestly, um... Whoever's still listening, um... I want to thank you for 
you know, staying tuned and, you know, listening to all of our ramblings, even. Oh, 100%. Uh, especially like, all of you, especially all of you One Piece fans. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to diss you so. I didn't mean to diss your um, show. You do love One Piece. We're just not as familiar with it as you are, for sure. And we'll definitely give it a shot when we can. Um, Some yeah, point I... in the next, before the heat death of the universe. Oh wait. Um, I will check out the live action. Don't come at me in the comments. The live action does look promising, but. Um, we will probably bring that up next time uh, when the live action does come out and see how well that see goes. see what about live action tell us not enough okay, oh okay that's it that's it <laughs> goodbye everyone you're bye remember to remember remember to smile bye bye